All right. We have next with us Mujtaba. Mujtaba, are you Muslim hadith rejector? Is this perfect dawa, guys? Yes, assalamu alaikum. Uh, brother Ijaz, you said well, you will not delete alaikum. anyone. I cannot hear this guy. Hold you on, said you don't can... delete anyone. Are you serious, really? Yes? I can't. One you, second. You said that you will not delete anyone. Okay. Delete. So, How do we delete yes. people? You said How do remove. We delete? Yes, you remo don't remove anyone. Okay. Oh, uh, remove, so, remove. Okay. Yes, yes. Just so sure. let me speak. Yes, I don't. I don't know how to delete anybody. Okay. So let let me speak, please. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, I would like. I'll to give know, you. I'm going to give you. Uh, wait, 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 wait. I'm dead serious about this, or live serious, whatever you want to call it. I'm going <laughs> to give you uh, one minute. Let me do a countdown timer. Yeah. Why one minute? I got a timer. Yeah, I got you have one minute. minute Mustafa, are you, your, are you a Muslim? Uh, of course, I'm a Muslim. Where is your salams? Yeah, because you, I should ask you before you delete me. Salam alaikum to everyone. Wa alaikum as salam. Because I, I usually get... Uh, you you, you know, started the with... Um, I usually get the leave. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like I you and he just have some beef. You probably had some history. Oh, no, 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 no. I, no, I just no, like... I think he has perfect dawah. So I just yes. wanted to give him that opportunity. Yes. So I would like to ask... I would like to ask one of you, please. One uh, versus one, not uh, everyone. I want to know how many verses are in Quran. Uh, Brother Ijaz, can you please tell me how many verses, if a non-believer, a non-Muslim, ask me how many verses are in Quran, what is your answer, please? Tell me. About 6,000. 6,000. No, it's not about. It's 6,236 verses in Quran. Yes? Who said? Who said? It is uh, 6,236. If you Google it. Are you absolutely sure? Uh, no, yes. No. Without... Okay. Okay. So who said and under which recitation? I mean, what do you mean? There, there are 6,236 verses in Quran without Bismillah, okay? Without yes, under Bismillah. which recitation? Which, which, which recitation recitation? style have that many verses? Because okay, so the different how... recitation styles have different different verse counts. So you mean that there are verses that are not in... No, no, no. There are verses that are joined in some recitations, and there are verses that are broken in, in, in to breathe. There are breathing spaces in some, so they're counted as two ayahs. And not not one. Okay. So, which recitation has that number of verses? I just uh, Google how many verses are in Quran. Okay, I'm sorry. Google, Google isn't a scholarly <laughs> reference. Okay. I'm sorry. So Google, me, is okay. right. Google is not a scholarly right. reference. I'm sorry, so my tell friend. Tell me if okay. somebody what's, what's the you point know, about the number of verses? What's the point? Yeah, what's the point? Anyway? What's the point anyway? So, I want to know how many verses are, are all verses of uh, Allah Subhanahu Taala in Quran, or there are missing verses in Quran? Yeah. Okay, that's a different question. That's a completely different yeah, that's a different question. So why, why you are because because there, you is a hadith, because there is a hadith that says that two verses of Quran has been eaten by a goat. That's why they are. Oh. Hold on, okay. hold on. Yes. Are you the person I spoke to today on Clubhouse? It's perfect, Dawa. I don't know. It's because he's been on our YouTube channel Maybe not. several times. Maybe not. You know, by, by the way, guys, just, just about this because you know, I'm actually really glad that Mushtaba brought this. Well, not that particular, but I mean, just in general, this topic. Uh, one problem I find with dealing with hadith rejectors is oftentimes we indulge ourselves in discussing tafsir with them, but as, w as has been demonstrated all time and time again, they don't have a criteria for tafsir. They don't exactly have a spectrum of tafsir. Literally, they can make it up as they go. We've seen that time and time again just in this stream alone. I would, I mean, that's a good topic to discuss right there, the reliability and the authenticity of the Qur'an. If of they the Qur'an. Can, Why do you believe the Qur'an is preserved? Exactly, right? But they reject hadith, they reject isnad, they reject the sahaba, they reject, uh, you know, if they reject all this methodology, because to reject hadith, they'd have to reject all that. But if you reject all that, you reject the methodology in which we trace the Quran back to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right? So then my question, and, and, that, 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 and that's how we know how many verses are in the Quran and which qara'at of the Quran are, are authentic or not. So I guess my question then would be, and this, this is why I usually, this is, just, this is just my humble opinion. I personally am not really a huge fan of talking to these guys about tafsir because they can literally make up anything they like. He's gone, subhanAllah. Okay. I was about to ask him. I didn't, I was, I didn't kick him that time. He dropped. Hey, I, I, I exposed the master plan. Now he left. He realized. No. So a question I typically like that. Oh, he's back. The question I usually ask hadith rejectors is one of these. Either A, why do you believe the Quran that you, that you read today, the 114 chapters? How do you know there weren't 115 chapters? Right? Or for example, I'll ask them, you recite, which Quran do you recite? Well, the problem is they have to, some of them don't even, don't, some of them don't even acknowledge the Arabic, like the first guess we had. But if they do regard the Arabic, I'll ask them, which Quran of the Quran do you recite? Oh, probably Hafsan Awesome. Okay, great. Why do you accept that one as authentic? And, you know, it, it's, it's quite funny the answers you give. It's a very, okay. yeah, very, 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 first, first before, before you, say, before you I have to say, I have to say, I'm not Hadith rejector. 
Okay, that's fine. So, do you accept the hadith if you are not a hadith rejecter? Do you yes, accept I accept. I, I accept authentic hadith. I say to uh, Quranists that if we don't follow hadith, we don't know what we have to wear in Hajj. We don't know that we have what we have to do exactly in Hajj. Okay, and I have been debating, uh, you know, and these uh, hadith rejecter like uh, Professor uh, Adip. He's one of the most famous one. I asked him what we have to wear in Hajj, and he couldn't answer me. Okay, so I'm not hadith rejecter, but I reject your fabricated hadiths that say that a sinner like me has the right to stone another sinner to death, okay. and I know this uh, bar barbaric act is. Uh, okay. act Before the, you the, qualify the all of these things, okay. let's just establish a principle. When you say you accept authentic hadith and you reject some of the hadith that we accept, what is the criteria of accepting hadith or rejecting hadith? So you must have some criteria, right? Yes, yes. If so, it goes, yeah. if it goes no, before, against... Before, before yeah. you tell me what they are, okay. so once you talk about like there's a criteria, I want to know whether this criteria is something that you just made it up yourself or well, this criteria is something that people can accept, people of knowledge can accept, people of history can accept. So the criteria that you are accepting, is it your own criteria? Or you think this criteria is something that is quite universal when it comes to studying and understanding the historical reports? For example, if I were to say, name me five statements, or give me five statements of the Prophet ﷺ, um, that Prophet Salaam said within his, you know, 23 years of ministry or through his prophethood, that can be authentically traced back to him. How are we going to do this? So do you want to go through these steps? All right. So I have to uh, say that the hadith that goes against Quran is fabricated. That's the first uh, step. The second step, of course, we have to know the chain of narration, of course. But uh, the first is, the most important is that if it goes against Quran, when Quran tells me that, uh, uh, you know, life rahaf din and you tell me, somebody tell me that kill anyone who leave Islam, that makes uh, a lot of munafiqun. I have been living in UAE and there are lots of munafiqun they say that they pray, they go to masjid, they go, uh, they uh, fast, but they don't like Islam because they are afraid to say that we don't believe. So these uh, fabricated hadith create millions of munafiqun in that area. To they, they are afraid to say that they are not Muslim. And what they do is, you know, harming Islam. Okay. So when Quran says that they're, uh, oh Muhammad, uh, uh, what is it? Um, invite them and if they reject let them be their account is on us so anyway, i am a myself a former uh, apostate if you call it okay if i was judged by you guys I, I would be killed i wouldn't be able to learn you know after 10 years i became muslim and i do dawah alhamdulillah everybody love it okay so i couldn't return or everybody i i couldn't, love you, I couldn't I couldn't accept the next DAO. I gotta tell you guys right now, it's perfect. But look, <laughs> but but I would be killed under your Sharia law, the fabricated Sharia law. Alhamdulillah, I wasn't judged by you. And that fabricated hadith says that two verses of Quran has been eaten by a goat. That's why it's not in Quran. Okay, and a lot of people have been stoned to so, death. Do you mind slowing down a little bit? So so far, yeah. I've got one thing that a statement that goes against the Qur'an cannot be authentic, correct? Exactly, yes, correct. Right, like, fine, good. Next criteria. As I said, that it has to be, it has to make sense as well, okay, that this is, uh, you know, from the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, uh, uh, a hadith that says that go and kill all dogs. No, no, don't, don't, don't give prophet. me examples. Okay. Principles. So you're okay. saying some statements that doesn't make sense... Mm -hmm. would not be authentic. Exactly, yes. Okay, so the previous person said Alif Lam Mim. Now, okay. can you tell me what that means? Uh, I have heard that these are Aramaic language. Somebody who was good in Aramaic language, he said that he, he, there is a video, I can share it with you, that, that he was saying, explaining that this means attention. In those times, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used this Aramaic language. It means Alif Flaming is means attention, like so, these let, 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 okay? Let's understand it, what you've said so far. Are you far. getting this from again? 
Um, that's okay. Sometimes that's okay. So you're saying Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who was an Arab, okay, he's speaking to his Arabic-speaking companions and non-believers, the mushrikun, uh -huh. and he's using words Aramaic, and they yes, understand yes. what it means. Uh, so the pagan Quraysh, the Meccan Quraysh, when they heard the Aramaic statements, Alif Lam Mim, you expect that they understood what it meant in Aramaic. Okay, as I said that that video I can share with you. No, you I'm, not watch it the I'm not interested in the video. I'm not interested in the video. Listen, 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 listen. Yeah. So now you're saying there is a theory that these words possibly have Aramaic origin and they mean something like pay attention, something like that. Yes, yes. You're, exactly. you, you are telling me that when Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said these things to them, Arabs, mm -hmm. Arabs who don't even... You know, we are talking about people who are not even literate. Not many people were literate at that time. And yet, they understood Aramaic and exactly what it meant. Not Alif Lam Mim, Alif Lam Ra, Ha Mim. Taha, what is Taha Mim? Taha, Yasin. So all of these things, obviously, they cannot be just simply, you know, you know, mumbo jumbo things like this. Because when Allah makes distinctive statements with these letters... You can't say they all mean pay attention. It simply makes no sense. So if you are someone who have a criteria of authenticating a hadith by something that needs to make sense, now tell me sensibly, what do these huruf al muqatta'at the disjointed letters as they are known as, what do they mean if indeed these are supposed to have some meanings? Because that's what you claim to... To, to understand they have meanings so let's start with that because you have a principle number two after that the first principle was it shouldn't go against the quran actually everyone accepts that an authentic hadith will never go against the quran okay so that's not matter of dispute second principle it means needs to make sense sensible so can you make some sense of these huruf al-muqatta'at the disjointed letters all right uh, first of all, I respect anybody who call in my channel, but you don't respect. You change my, uh, you know, my name, and that's not uh, nice of the uh, MC. Uh, so another thing is that this Aleph Lam Min is not the most important. Uh, well, you know, most to be fair, here, he came okay? in trying to hide. I'm going to mute you real quick. Look, you came in having a name, Mujtaba, to kind of hide who you are, and then you come in as put perfect dawah to, you know, call people to your channel, which I don't want people to do, right? And I put bad kumbaya dawah because you've made it very clear that Hindus are going to heaven. You've made it clear that Christians are going to heaven. you made it clear that atheists are going to heaven, according to you. So that is, in essence, kumbaya dawah. So if you have a problem with it, you didn't change your belief. But I'm, you know, I'm not going to let you, you know, advertise your, your dawah, your YouTube channel. Sure. Yeah. So let's go back to the, permission. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go back to the second principle that needs to make sense because you understand the Quran has to make sense because it's from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He's not going to reveal something to us, sent to us, which doesn't make sense. So, what do you make sense of those ayat of Allah? Okay. First of all. Uh, I have to say that uh, I put my name Mujra, but that's my name uh, actually because you, I have been censored in the past by everybody. Okay, I changed so, it back. No wonder. Okay, no, no, okay. 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 Let, let's let, uh, let's 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 now. Okay, now, now. Okay, now. No wonder you've been censored. Look, look. I said that uh, this Aleph Lam Min is not so important that we are going to discuss it. Is. it every about, single ayah is okay. important. Okay, this is not about hadith. This is not no. about rejecting hadith. Every single ayah is important. Yes. Do you I agree? Know, but I, I know I said that it is right now. Uh, I, I should uh, bring that video. Somebody who know Ara Aramaic, he was explaining. I'm not, I don't the Quran know Quran is not in Aramaic. Okay. Okay. Quran is I, Arabic. Arabic. Okay, so, so, okay so, so what they say uh, according to you, what Aleph Lam mean, uh, means according to you? No, no, no. I am the one asking you to make sense. Your criteria of authenticating or rejecting the hadith is it has to make sense. So now yeah. let's go back to the Quran. The Quranic okay. ayah must make sense. So what is the meaning, sensible meaning of this ayat? Of course, okay. I have my understanding of them, but that's not, I am not on trial. 
Your view is on trial. Your view is in question, is in dispute. So what do these mean or what are they for? This ayat, explain sensibly. Okay, uh, I said that it makes sense for me when uh, somebody explained. Before, I didn't know what does it mean, okay? There are verses that we don't understand, perhaps, but it doesn't mean that uh, they don't make sense, just we don't understand it. But no, there no, are... If you, if you don't know what it means, how can it make sense to you? They don't in make any sense. way, shape, or form? They don't make sense, but that doesn't make sense. Do no, you even sense. know what you're saying? If you don't even yeah. know what it says, what it means, how can you say it's sensible? Okay, let's say... You can't make, make a value okay, judgment okay. of something that you don't even know what it means. Okay, so let's go for just that, that if goes against Quran, then it is fabricated. Do you no, 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 no. Second principle. Second okay. principle. All because right. I'm going to ask you for more and more principles until we know exactly what this package is all about in terms of how you authenticate or how you reject the hadith based on authentication. So the mm -hmm. second principle that you're dealing with is something that needs to make sense. So... You, you are now in a position in which you are going to reject the Qur'an because you don't know what sensible explanation there are. If you ask me, the Qur'an explains that tilka ayat, these are the ayat of the Qur'an. Okay. okay. And these ayat, of course, are known to us. They are huruf muqattad, disjointed letters. And in Arabic language, letters themselves do not have a meaning of their own. When they connect it together to form like a verb, or a noun, it has some meanings. Even the harf, like fi and ala and, and ila, they don't have meaning of their own. They have meanings when they're connected to something else. So the, the letters themselves do not have to have a meaning. And these are all disjointed letters. So what they are there for, they are there for a function. So it doesn't have to have a meaning because meanings are linked to words. They're not words. Do you understand so far? These are not words. That's why in the whole of the Islamic traditions, they are called huruf, disjointed, disconnected huruf, not words. Okay, so uh, the first one I said that if it goes against Quran, then... You're going back to the okay? first principle. I'm saying, I'm going to move, move on. First principle, no one disputes. Second principle, okay, so I'm saying... No, no, let's, second let's principle, second principle okay. is what we're discussing. Let's go into it, explore a bit more. Third principle. How do you authenticate something? Give me another principle. Uh, chain of narration, of course. Chain of narration. Yes, yes. So, so how do you know about the chains of narration? You have to read the biography of the people? No, I mean that... Uh... It has to go back to the uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But if th the first one is, is violated... You know, we're not discussing the first one. We are going to discuss the ones that you criteria that you're adding. So when you say chains of narration, yes. now, about the people within the chain, how do you know they're good people, people of good memory, people of good character? How do you know? You have to go and find other people's judgment about them? And that's not just for hadith, by the way. That's for the Quran as well. That's for the isnad chains of the Quran as well. So that applies not just to hadith. That's a, if you can't do that for the isnad, so sorry, for the hadith. Because I think so far, you know, Ramzi, so far I think the only criteria that you use is you think there are hadith that goes against the Quran. And yes, yes. That's the, rest, the most important. Mo that's yeah, the most important. Exactly. Two is most important. Yeah, and exactly. The rest, and the rest of them, actually, you just say, okay, you know, it's, it's fine. As long as, you know, there's some to be some uh, sense is making out of it and it doesn't dis, uh, go against the Qur'an, we accept it, isn't it? Okay. So, so if I give you... If I... See, chapter 4, verse 81, okay, Allah SWT says that if they differ very much with Qur'an, then they are not from your Lord, okay? So, so if, if they, chapter 4, verse 81 says Can you that, quote that in Arabic for me? Uh, no, I cannot quote it in Arabic, okay? Why not? It, because I, uh, I'm not Arab speaker. Yes. Neither am I Arab speaker. Okay, so... So um, why, have to, why, 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 why I have to quite quote but, but, it in Arabic? I, I will yes. tell you why. Because when the Quran, it's only Quran in Arabic. Okay, if you're right. going to give primacy or importance to the Quran, let the Quran speak for itself in the Arabic okay. language. Um, Your interpretation yeah. in English or in Bangla or Urdu, these are secondary. So, okay. yeah, the Quran in Arabic, please. So, Surah 4. Okay. 
Mustafa, and can I make that even clearer so so we can a, a address the fact that the Quran actually tells us that it is Arabic, so you don't have any doubts, right? Okay, no, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and so to Yusuf, 12th chapter, okay. verse number two, right? Okay. Inna anzalnahu Qur'anan arabiyyan la'allakum ta'qinun. Indeed, we have sent it down as an Arabic Qur'an so that you may understand. Yeah. Right? So okay. the Qur'an is Arabic. Okay. When it's English, when we're, that's no longer Qur'an. It's translations of meaning of whatever, right? Just make, that has to be super clear. Yeah. Okay. So go ahead. Brandon, now, read, read, read the first verse number eighty-one, right, of chapter four. Go back yes. to verse number eighty, the the verse before it, and read from there, please, because okay. that has everything to do with what we're talking about. Yes. Can you do that, or you want me to do that? You, you, please. I'll read the Arabic first. In Arabic, I cannot. Read. No, I cannot read it in Arabic. Okay? I said I I'll read, read the English. Arabic first. Okay. And then right. you can read the English. Translation of the meaning. Okay, just a moment. I have to bring it up. Yes. May you tell me you to El Rasul of the God of Allah, Allah, woman to well, Fama or still neck. I lay him happy. Go ahead. Okay, just a moment. Eight, you have to bring it up. Uh, Mr. Just a quick question Do you accept all the Qur'at? We will come uh, back to this, inshallah, because this is something going to really yeah. educate our, yeah. you know, okay. brothers in humanity in this case, what yeah. exactly is oh. the Qur'an? Okay, uh, now I read the, <clears throat> the translation. Whoever obeys the messenger has truly obeyed Allah, but mm. whoever turns away, then know that we have not sent you, O Prophet, as a keeper over them, okay? And then... 81 uh, says, uh, let me see, 81 says, and they say we obey, but then, uh, but when they leave you, this is about monophilon, okay, a group of them would spend an, uh, the night contradicting what they said. And Allah records all their uh, shames, so turn away from them and put your trust in Allah. And Allah is sufficient as a, a trustee uh, of affair. Next mm -hmm. one says, do they not then reflect on the Quran? Had it been from anyone other than Allah, they would have certainly found in it many uh, inconsistencies. Okay, yeah. so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, what these people, these monafiqun were saying uh, when they were leaving uh, Prophet Muhammad's lecture at night, okay, and they were saying something else. So if it differ very much with Quran, then these are not from your Lord. So uh, this is uh, about these uh, uh, Quranists as well that I have been discussing with them that what if uh, what Allah SWT says here that we have to uh, match with Quran. This is Hadith that we have to match with Quran and if it goes against Quran and differ with Quran very much, then it is not from your Lord. Okay. Can I, so, can I ask a question? Yes. yes. Do you believe you can beat your wife? Sorry? Do you believe you can beat your wife? No, I don't believe in that. But the Quran says you can. No, absolutely. Quran doesn't say that. We can go. We, uh, okay. So how, uh, why, why are you saying the Quran doesn't say? It? If you're going to interpret it without external interpretations, if you're, yeah. which means you just read it literally, then it says, right? Well, let me read it. No. Okay. The, the, doesn't the Quran say you can beat your wife or not? Okay. No, it doesn't say. What does I it say? To, it says leave her. I can bring bring for you. Uh, uh, different translation as well. Okay, there are. Okay, bring me translation. Bring me translation. Okay. We got. Okay. okay, so go to Quran. Uh, can you please open and share it with everybody? No, no. Which Quran, Quran you got in front of you? Yes, which Quran uh, you got in front of you? Yes, uh, I say that it is a different translation. So what translation are, do you have in front of you? Uh, uh, go to Quran. Uh, no, no. Uh, Islamawaken yeah. Do you do you, okay. do you possess a Quran in English? Yes, yes, I. I All possess. right. Do, do you do you have it nearby? No, I don't have it nearby. I can sh uh, uh, share it with you. What's from the name the, of the translation? What, what translation uh, do you read from? Uh, Doctor Safi Kaskas. Okay, his translation, and there are other translations. Sounds like something I, else in Arabic. Sounds like something else. Safi. Kaskas. Yeah, I mean, no, it's not, it's why, not, do you, why do you? 
Why do you yeah. trust this translation over the others? Because, because uh, strike has been used in Quran in many, uh, many places and there are different uh, meaning of strike in Quran. Yes, that's not there. the question. Why okay. do you trust his, his translation of it and not others? Why? Uh, that name means that, that, that means something very different in Palestine when you say those words that he just said. <laughs> okay, look. Yeah, it, why I trust it? Because <clears throat> it says in, uh, there are several steps that you have to uh, go. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to try to solve a situation and the situation will not be solved by beating your wife. The three steps? The three because, steps? Uh, first step is to advise her. Second step is to uh, separate from uh, in the bed and third step is to leave her and what's the, the Arabic word you, what's the Arabic word is a uh, strike yeah but it, it doesn't mean to to beat her it no means that's that the Arabic word the Arabic word is not strike the, what's the, the, Arabic the, word? the Arabic word is uh, World, zara, World zara, 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 yes zara yeah. and it has been Zarabu. used in different meaning in Quran a travel as well. The, the meaning has also has, has travel. And the next verse, that, say it that, has. You're, the, you're the right. Verse, Darabha, yeah. Darabha al-Arud, right? To hit the yeah. hit the ground, like I hit the yes, ground yes. running, right? Yes, yes. We understand that. Yes. But we're Unless asking you. La, 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 yes. Stop, please. Yes. Like, stop talking. You're frustrating me because I I don't know how you are not understanding the question. Uh, okay. This has nothing to do with why you accept. Except why do you accept this translation? Because regardless of this verse. Why do you accept this translation of this translator who is saying that the tafsir, because what you're reading is a tafsir, this is not Qur'an. The Qur'an does not say the word strike, it does not say the word leave, it does not say the word depart, it does not say the word beat, right? It's, it's daraba, right? it's the root, okay. which okay. has different meanings. So why, the, the question that you have to answer, why do you accept Safi or Ghabi, whatever his name is, why do you accept his translation? over other translations not because just for this verse for anything okay. why do you trust him and, and, this, okay. and his interpretation okay because i understand myself as well that the next verse says 435 say, uh, sorry 435 says that i have read Mujtaba, you're not understanding i don't care what these verses say why do you accept him as an authority why are you taking his translation of the quran over other translations of the Qur'an. So, Mushtaba, what are the credentials that Safi Kaskas has that makes him an expert to be able to translate the Qur'an? What are his credentials? Do you know Not, not only credentials, why do we have a preferential acceptance right. of yes. one translation of the other? Because that will then tell us exactly where our sincerity lies. Because if you have a particular approach, we need to know exactly what approach is. Is it that, you know, you feel that he's in, in line with your thinking and doesn't matter, oh. you know, as long as he agrees with you, you accept his translation? Mm -hmm. You know, we no, need to know, understand no. how you're approaching the book of Allah. If you're approaching the book of Allah with your own desires, with your own ego, and what your ego accepts and what your ego rejects, then this is not the right approach. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the best interpretation of the Qur'an is the Qur'an and, and, and the Prophet sallallahu When the Qur'an, Allah and His Messenger, when they, they have decided about a matter, that's it. It's binding on us. And the best interpretation is when they have given this interpretation. So where and how do you approach to understand the Qur'an based on what principles? Okay, uh, based on many, many other verses of Quran, Allah SWT in chapter 3, verse 7 says that uh, there verse are... Verses translated by that same individual. Oh, We're questioning Mustafa, why... You're missing the point. Okay, wow. let, 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 me, Mustafa, let me break it down for you. Let me break it down for you. Can you explain to me who is Safi Kaskas first? Who is Safi Kaskas? Saif, Safi Kaskas, uh, it is not only him. There are others as well. Okay. No, no, Safi you, is no, no. Who, who is... is because you accept... Who is he? Who is he? Okay. Who is he? No. He's is a he? Palestinian. Yeah, he's a Palestinian educated man living in USA. Okay. Do not, don't, don't, don't insult us Palestinians like that. Don't insult okay. us Palestinians like that. Okay. Sorry? Okay, so don't you don't know him. him, you don't know him, then uh, you don't have to say, but he is Palestinian and he's living in USA and he's not the only one, okay? There are other uh, translations that also say leave her, okay? Because this is... I didn't uh, ask for justification. I said, who is Safi Kaskas, first of all? You said he's a Palestinian. That's all I've heard. What else? Okay. What else is he? He's a, uh, he has a education, good education in USA. Yeah. I don't know. I, exactly. I, have, I have an education. Yeah. I have an okay. education. I have a good education. So what? Okay. 
What education does he have? I, I'm not sure about that. Okay, but I, okay. but I'm so, no, so, but I, so you don't know what education he has. No, I know that he ha- he has this translation, and his translation is no, in no, no. The, listen, in one step at a time. You know, you know, you know, you know there are Islamophobes. Muslim. There are Islamophobes yeah. who translated the yeah. Quran. What's your point? Okay, exactly. So, so okay. Mustafa, please, please, please work with me, okay? So, Safi, you Safi Kaskas has education. You don't know what education. Then you say he's translated the Quran. Uh, okay, so why did he translate the Quran? What was his reason? Did did, did did he tell you? No, I haven't asked him. Okay. Okay. Well, because but there are thousands have, of trans- are, so, Yes, so there what, are thousands. I have to go and ask everyone what why yes, you no. have translated yes, Quran. Yes, impo- yeah, it's important to know why an okay. author writes a book. Okay. okay, you have to ask them. If you don't ask them, you read their biography to understand why. What was his motivation? Every okay. Quran translator on the planet. Okay. Always writes a preface to say, "Here's the reasons I felt it necessary to write, or we felt it necessary to write a translation." Have you read his reasons for why he wrote the trans, why he wrote his his translation? Okay. Unfortunately, you changed the topic totally. I was going to talk about that fabric. No, okay, I stick to the, stick to the about, topic we're on. About, okay, you will no, get, Mushtaba, 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 we'll get to it, but I want to understand. Mushtaba, you don't know my topic, no. You don't Mustafa, you bought topic. evidence. Mustafa, listen to me. Listen yes. to me. You bought evidence to the table, and I want okay. to understand whether this evidence is worth accepting. Mm-hmm. So therefore, I'm questioning it. I want to know who is Safi Kaskas. Why did he write this translation? What what makes him a, an authority to write this translation? And secondly, why do you choose his translation out of hundreds and thousands of others? Okay, I said that he's not the only one, and then I have made my research, okay? Because it makes sense that next verse, 435, says that, and if, in oh, case you, you fear split... That okay, Mustafa, I don't know, I, I, I'm, I'm really not speaking English clearly. I asked I you to it just... From to, Quran, no, because I, asked I, you, I asked you to just, no, as Brother Mansur said, when you say it in English, it's not Quran. When you say it in English, it's somebody's version of what they think the Arabic said. It's an interpretation. I think what, interpretation. It, what he's trying to say is that unless and until it fits with my narrative, I will reject it. No. In can short, that is you? what he's trying to do. Can I prove you? Can I prove you that all of them, all of them who says that I would like to prove you that they are all wrong? Chapter 5, verse 38, okay? Uh, Ramzi, you are a, you are a, uh, you you know Arabic, okay? You are a, a native Arab 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 speaker. Doesn't or mean not. anything. Doesn't mean that anything. Okay. One, no, wait, okay, wait. one, 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 a couple yeah. things. One, I never claim to be an, a native Arabic speaker. I know some okay. Arabic. I'm, right. Okay, it's not. It's right. not. It's, I didn't anyway, know. anyway. anyway. But anyway, no, no, no. Let me let me also bring up something. You just change chapter five, verse thirty-eight. Can you please, any of you, can you please read that uh, verse? Can you I think we are going to something totally different. No, no, we were establishing the usul. You we were establishing the usul of the principles of how you authenticate the hadith in look, your approach, in your understanding. Look, look. So you, are clearly, you are clearly, you are clearly uh, make just what you want to say, not allowing me. Chapter five, verse ten. No, no, no. We 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 can't just go this or there. We have to have a common ground. Okay. You yeah. have. You have a disagreement with us in okay. that you do not take some of the hadith, even though they are authenticated by us. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Our scholars, to... even though they have authenticated them, okay. you do not accept it. Likewise, okay. in the Quran, there seems to be some interpretation that you do not accept that we have given interpretation to. Like this okay. is what Hamza was alluding to. The okay. Quran says something in Surah An Nisa about. Whether striking or beating women, whatever that means to you, you seem to disagree with us, and, and yes. you are giving us certain translations with interpretation. So now we need to understand why we choose one translation over the other. Is it because the translation that you're choosing best fits the Quranic Arabic, the historical context, the explanation of the Prophet, and so on and so forth? Or is this translation like Safi Kaskas, he writes in the beginning, his assumptions, Safi Kaskas 2018, right? He, la- he gives you the reasons why he's chosen a particular way he's translating. So there are a lot of assumptions bound be- in his translations. 
And this translation seems to go along with your values, your norms, your ethics. Is this what it is all about? Because now, if you can say one thing now and then tomorrow someone say, look, I don't agree with this Quranic translation because it says we can slaughter animals. How can you slaughter animals? We are vegetarians. And you'll find a translation by a vegetarian. It says, interpret it away, saying when Allah says slaughter, it doesn't mean slaughter. It means to be kind to them. You can bring up all of these translations and interpretation and so on and so forth. You modify the Quran, what it means and what it says, based on your own norms and ethics and values in time and places that you live. So we want to know what is the best way to understand the Quran? What is the approach? How okay. is the Quran and its translations going to be acceptable to us? What principles are they? That's exactly right. what we're asking. <clears throat> yeah. Why okay. did you choose this translation over okay. the others, for example? All right. So th that's why you don't allow me to speak. No, this is uh, the your chance to okay. speak. I, 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 when I, we do not, okay, do not, do not me explain the line of question then. Can I just sorry, sorry, been... look, look, the reason yeah. I asked you this question, because you said if a hadith contradicts the Quran, you um, you throw it away, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Now, the Quran that we, the verse I said to you, it says about beat the wife. Now, we have a hadith that says, you know, obviously you can't beat your wife. But I'm trying to understand as, as what you right. believe uh, that for you, that hadith would contradict the Quran. But the problem, you, the way you're trying to sneak out of it is using some next level uh, translation, which doesn't okay. just. It's not a translation. Just because it suits you. Just because it okay. suits you. Can I explain? It is oh, not okay. a translation. No, it, it is. is. It's just, it's just, okay. We know. We know why you use yeah, that. We know yeah. it looks like a. Yeah, yeah we know it. It's so, so at the end, exactly. response. Can I highlight Look, a at the end, the Much, much Like when we asked you the question, we knew the answer to it already. When we said, "Why do you accept this guy's translation?" It's because it sits better with you. Because this is what this is. You know, I'm a people person. Like I look at people, I assess them. And I give recommendations. I'm in sales. I, I, I manage accounts. This is what I do. I can read people. What you did from the very beginning, you made clear that you are perfect Dawah. Your Dawah is perfect, and you're talking to non-Muslims all the time. You're one of those people who I met when I first became a Muslim who came up to me. A oh, brother, there's no jihad in Islam. Brother, we don't do anything bad in Islam. Everything is good. We're so nice people. Ooh, you just want everybody to be pleased with you. So you it want no your polygamy. version no, of the no Quran. Yeah, you want your version of the Quran to be something no, huh? that you can give an easy answer to to non-Muslims when they approach you because you don't have the confidence to stand behind the things that we believe as Muslims traditionally. Right? Yeah, we don't believe in extremism obviously, but there is understanding of things to where you can get the right answers and still be confident upon this stuff. And that's why you accept this guy's translation because it's like okay, Darb here doesn't mean hit, right? It means leave her, hit the ground running, kick her out, divorce her, whatever. And this is your methodology. It's clear because every single question we will ask you, as in we can go on for hours, we got people in the back, so I'm going to end the, our interaction here. We can bring on another time. Is that you are picking and choosing things based on how easy it is for you to give these answers to non-Muslims who you're giving your perfect doubt to. And this is All this right. is the reality of it. And this is, Can in I essence, say, what is the, the definition of following your desires. All right. Uh, I know that uh, you may not have enough time, but uh, if you promise me that you have me another time, I, I would love to talk about it. A chapter, I, uh, you know, anybody who wants to read Quran have to first read chapter 3, verse 7, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, we Only already. those those in in, in uh, those firm in knowledge understand the unspecific verses of Quran, and they say we follow all of it because those whose heart is corrupted they follow only the uh, unspecific verses. They don't follow the the uh, precise verses of Quran, chapter three, verse seven. It's very important. So how those firm in knowledge okay. understand the true meaning of the. Uh, unspecific verses, they put them beside each other and they take the, the true meaning of the interpretation of that those verses. And that's why I also have put these verses beside each other and I have seen that this verse uh, about uh, wife beating is not wife beating, it is leaving her because next verse says that if you fear that they separate, then bring uh, a judge from her family and his family uh, so Brandon, Brandon, it's, like the last, it's like the last 15 minutes just didn't happen with this guy. Yeah, so, okay. yeah. Right. Thank you, so, Seba. I appreciate it. Um, we wish you the best. We got other guests. Uh, take care. Uh, there's one higher problem that uh, with, with, 
what, what's his, what's his name? Mr. Mustaba was we, we kind of like kind of granted him. For, I, I think we we're a bit too generous with, you know, he accepts. Well, here's the thing. There's different calibers of hadith rejectors we, we've pointed out before. Uh, some of them accept hadith just on their whims and desires. And some of them also accept some hadith but reject others. They, they're a bit closer to truth, but still way, way out of whack. This guy was kind of like that. He accepts hadith, but in reality, he doesn't. Like, he kind of, like, like he, he realizes the problems of being a complete hadith rejector, but at the same time, he just doesn't have the confidence, doesn't have the, how do I say this? But you saw right now, he's being very selective with what, which translations he accepts with what he wants because he knows he's he, he wants he wants to have quote-unquote perfect dawa like perfect Ramsey, dawa. Ramsey yeah. he's been watching the stream he's seen what happens to those who try to be hadith rejected so he could have come well, up with that right, same plan right, so, yeah. Yeah, he's trying he's to tell the whitewashed version of islam that's what he's trying to do you know but the yeah. problem is so, we're, 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 we're constantly addressing them with on the topic of taf either tafsir or the meaning of verses or how to understand verses but the problem is they can't even substantiate but these verses are revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They could never uh, uh, substantiate that. They could never substantiate how they recite them, wh whether they're authentic or not. They couldn't do that. They couldn't do that. I mean, this guy, he believes in Isnad to an extent, but in reality, he doesn't. It's just the, the Isnads he likes. And, you know, the, so it's, it's in reality, that's that's the core of the issue, whether they accept the Quran or not. Uh, tafsir and interpretation and translation, that's almost like, like, that's like the frosting on the cake, but it's not the meat and potatoes of it. So th this yeah, defense yeah. that I've heard now several times, which is that I will only take hadith that agrees with the Quran. If you actually, uh, if you actually unpack what that statement is saying, it's actually just saying I accept the Quran only, because the whole purpose of hadith is to expand on the meanings that are in the Quran. Therefore, by definition, there will be hadith there that will be expanding on topics and explaining things that you won't find in the. Like, for example, Salah, like Hajj, like the components that go into Hajj, right? Um, and, and many, many other topics. So what's he going to do? Those hadith that explain those those expanded versions of the topics, that is he going to reject those, the expansiveness? Because that's what he's saying. So I think for all these, um, you know, what I call these pseudo hadith acceptors, when you say you only accept something that goes in line with the Quran, what you're actually saying is I'm a Quran only, because the whole purpose of Hadith is to give you extra explanation that isn't in the Quran. That was the role of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu That's why he was sent with the Quran, to live it, to expand on it, and to explain it, and also to ensure people didn't make mistakes and misinterpret it. Um, and so that's if you're going down that road, that's a very dangerous road in my opinion, because you're only one step away from saying, I actually reject all hadith now because the Quran is enough for me. And then actually you've you've entered into the, the realm of of um of being of kufr. Yeah. 